Hello everybody, welcome to this uh, massive open online course on solid fluid operations. In this uh, operations we are discussing uh, regarding this uh, solid fluid operations where uh, that how uh, particles will be flowing through the packed bed and also what will the particle characteristics and uh, also uh, what are the basic uh, law whenever fluid will be flowing through the particulate beds and what are the you know basic mechanism of mixing characteristics uh, of solids even a solid solid and solid fluids what are the basic design of mixing equipment uh, that we have uh, you know uh, discussed uh, in the previous uh, lecture. So, today uh, we will start another module it is called you know fluidization. Under this fluidization module we will discuss about that what is the basic understanding or basic fundamentals of fluidization and its application. And also we will discuss uh, about the different uh, flow patterns of the fluidization and also uh, what will be the minimum uh, condition to uh, get that fluidization uh, operation. And also we will discuss uh, something about uh, application of this fluidization and uh, also uh, we will discuss in this module uh, the basic fundamentals of uh, you know flotation where uh, you know gas liquid solid three phase will be taking part for uh, you know separation of that particulate materials or uh, beneficiation of the minerals uh, they are what will be the basic fundamentals. So, uh, in this uh, lecture uh, we will try to understand the basic fundamentals of uh, fluidization and its application. So, here uh, this uh, lecture includes that introduction to fluidization flow patterns and application of this fluidization. Now, uh, what is fluidization why actually we are going to talk about this fluidization. You will see that when a solid particles will be converting from a static uh, solid like state to a dynamic fluid like state by means of you know flow of fluid either by gas or liquid. So, it will be called as you know fluidization. So, this is basically that the suspension of the solid particles by the action of flow of uh, fluid or you can say that uh, by the action of uh, you know kinetic energy by applying the gas or liquid there to fluidize that particles against the gravity of the particles. So, as a definition we can say that the process by which a bed of solid particles is converted from a static solid like state to a dynamic fluid like state by means of a flow of fluid either gas or liquid. So, this is the fluidization. So, fluidization whenever we are talking about that terms you can easily understand that the suspension of the particles or give the flow of that particles against its gravity and getting it into a suspension state. So, it is called fluidization you will see that in this uh, video that how that solid particles is converting to its you know that uh, dynamic state from its you know static bed condition. And also you will see that here due to that you know flow of fluid you will see that solid particles is being you know uplifted or suspending against its uh, gravity. So, this is called you know fluidization. Now, this fluidization terms basically uh, a multi phase operation where multi phase systems in that case there may be the operation with the gas liquid and solid. So, whenever uh, that operation will be based on gas or liquid or liquid or solid or solid or gas or solid and solid or you can say that gas liquid solid. So, all three phases will be you know taking part in a particular operation. So, because of this you know three phase operation or three phase systems or you know or taking part in that operation it will be called as multi phase operation. So, fluidization basically a multi phase operation because in this case the solid particles will be you know suspending or solid particles will be you know driven by either gas or liquid 
or combination of gas and liquids. So, in that case this fluidization may be of two phase and three phase. In case of two phase there you can say that uh, it will be you know gas and solid or liquid and solids. That means, gas solid operation that means, here the solid will be suspending under the action of flow of gas and liquid solid fluidization it is basically the solid particles again will be suspending okay, uh, under the flow of liquid. So, it will be called two phase fluidization whereas, in case of three phase flow you will see that the solid particles will be suspending or driven by gas and liquid both flow. So, here it will be called as gas liquid solid fluidization. So, we are having there are two categories of fluidization one is called two phase another is called three phase fluidization. Gas or liquid acts as a continuous and solid acts will be as a discrete or dispersed phase. Okay. So, in that case it will be called as multi phase systems and uh, this fluidization engineering or operation will be regarded as a multi phase system or operation. So, why does this fluidized solid bed behave like a fluid? So, whenever the solid particles will be suspending against its gravity by the flow of liquid or gas, you will see that this fluidized solid will behave like a fluid. In that case, you will see that whenever it will be uh, you know behaving like a fluid, it will show some characteristics of the fluid like it seeks its own level that means, it will give you the bed height. You will see that the objects with a lower density like solids with a lower density then the bed density will float on its surface. Like you know that in a uh, liquid or gas you will see if any objects if you you know push down and if it has some you know that uh, floating capability then you will see that by its buoyancy effect it will go up based on its buoyancy force. In this case also the solid particles when or any object when it will be pushed down in a bed of that solid bed you will see that the objects will be going up because of its buoyancy effect. So, this type of phenomena it will be showing by this you know fluidized condition. So, objects with a lower density then the bed density will float on its surface bubbling up and down if pushed downwards. Also you will see that we can have that static bed pressure or static liquid pressure or gas pressure there in case of only liquid or gas whenever we are using. So, in this case also when gas liquid a solid liquid or you know solid gas will be fluidizing you will see that the beds of that fluidized condition will show a static pressure head due to the gravity. Also we can have the two similar fluidized bed will be showing their static pressure heads because of this you know two similar levels in the fluidized bed surface. So, we can say that levels between two similar fluidized beds equalize their static pressure heads. Another characteristics will be shown by this fluidized condition it is called that hydrostatic pressure. This hydrostatic pressure will be raised by if the you know depth of the bed will be increased. That means, that higher bed of this fluidized bed will give you the higher hydrostatic pressure. Okay. So, that is why you can say that these are the some characteristics factor based on which we can say that fluidized solid bed will behave like a fluid. Now, whenever you are getting solid fluidized in that fluidized bed or solid suspended in that fluidized bed during that suspension of that solid the characteristics of this you know suspension or you can say that pattern of the suspension or the flow pattern of that suspension or fluidized bed or flow phenomena will be different and it will be different from its minimum flow condition. At the minimum flow condition you will see that the solid particles will try to get it is just suspended and beyond the minimum suspension condition if you increase the gas or liquid velocity in the bed you will see that the flow pattern in this fluidized bed will be different. So, there are several flow patterns you will observe in the fluidized bed. 
In this you know slide a diagram is shown here you will see that this diagram in this case it will be you know these are actually fluidized bed and in this fluidized bed you will see from the bottom there will be supply of gas or liquid and from the top the gas and liquid will be coming out and during that flow of gas and liquid the bed of the solid particle will be getting suspended at a certain gas or liquid velocity. So, you will see that if you increase the gas velocity, if you consider only that gas, you will see that that suspension phenomena, suspension pattern will be different. So, it is called the flow pattern. This flow pattern will be different as gas velocity will be increased. So, at the zero gas velocity condition, you will see that solid particles will not be suspending. So, in that case, it will be fixed. So, it is called fixed bed condition. When if you increase very small, you know, you can set proportions of that gas velocity, you will see that solid particles is try to get just suspended. So, there you will see that whenever that particles will be getting just suspending condition at its minimum flow condition, there will be no formation of gap between the solid particles, only that the particles will be getting suspended and there will be a void where there will be no pattern of that void, there will be no bubbling of that void. In that condition here in this picture you will see that the gas will be flowing upward just by getting that particle suspended. In that case there will be no formation of like this you know certain shape of gap or void in this bed. So, in that case it will be regarded as homogeneous flow pattern or it will be called as incipient flow pattern or sometimes it will be called as minimum fluidized flow pattern or also it is regarded as particulate flow pattern. So, there are several names of at this condition. So, whenever just particles will be getting suspended that flow regimes will be regarded as incipient fluidized condition or particulate flow pattern or you can say that homogeneous flow pattern. Okay. And beyond this gas velocity, if you just increase the gas velocity beyond this minimum flow condition, you will see there will be a tendency to form a bubble shape you know void inside the bed, fluidized bed. So, there will be a formation of bubbles and whenever this gas will be passed through that you know distributor, there will be a formation of bubbles from the distributor itself. So, here this is the distributor through which that gas will be supplied. So, from this distributor you will see that the gas will be you know passed through that bed as a dispersed phase of bubbles. So, it will be called as bubbling flow pattern. Then if you increase again that gas velocity beyond this bubbling flow condition, you will see that the formation of bubbles will be in such a way that the some bubbles will be occupying most of the cross sectional area of the bed. So, in that case the bubbles or gap or void whichever will be formed that occupy almost you know 90 percent of the cross section of this bed and there will be a big size of void or bubbles will be forming and that will be flowing upward and it will have certain pattern or certain shape and that may be you know flowing centrally through that bed. Okay. So, this type of flow phenomena it will be called as slugging flow pattern. Okay. So, in that case the slugging may will happen that axial as well as flat. So, in that case axial means here the void fraction will be flowing upward through the center part of the bed, whereas flat bed slug will occupy most of the cross sectional area of the bed and it will be flowing upward as a you know flat slag. Then if you increase again the gas velocity, you will see that there will be high gas velocity there. In that case the bubbles whatever it will be formed, it will not be having any particular shape it will be you know showing as a churning condition inside the bed. So, at a high gas velocity you will see that there will be arbitrary shape of that bubbles that may be some bubbles will be very small, some will be you know longitudinal, some will be you know that occupying whole you know axial uh, you know position in the bed. Here in this shown it is uh, in this figure it is shown that there will be churning condition of that you know gas distribution inside the bed. So, it will be called churn turbulent flow pattern. And beyond that churn turbulent flow condition, again if you increase the gas velocity, 
it may be you know that more than 20 times of that you know terminal velocity of the particles. So, in that case you will see that it will be called as fast fluidization pattern. So, in that case again it will not be that particular shape of that bubbles or gap inside that bed you will see there will be you know huge gap inside the bed there will be a dilution state almost you can say and churn turbulent condition will be there, but here in this case there will be no particular shape of the churn turbulent condition. Okay. Here in this picture it is shown like this the solid particles will try to go up okay, as a small small chunk you know parallelly through the bed. So, it will be called as first fluidization condition even if you increase the gas velocity beyond this 20 times of terminal velocity you will see that the solid particles will be flowing through the pipe as a pneumatic condition. That means, there the particles will be as a dilute condition all the particles will be flowing upward no particles will be flowing downward or it will not come back to the bottom. So, all the particles will be flowing upward because its terminal velocity very low compared to the gas velocity. So, in that case all the particles will be flowing you know like a dilute fluid dilute state of that you know fluid or solid particles will be flowing upward. So, it is called pneumatic flow condition. Okay. So, in this case uh, we are having different flow patterns some will be bass operated some will be transport operated some bass operated up to you know bubbling or churn turbulent flow condition you can you know called as a bass operated fluidized bed or fluidization and then first fluidization and pneumatic transport flow pattern will be regarded as transport operated fluidization. Okay. So, these are some different flow patterns that will be you know observed in the fluidized bed. Then some basic elements of the fluidized bed suppose you are considering any fluidized bed. So, what are those you know basic elements of that you know uh, fluidized bed there will be you know that some solid feeder through which that uh, particles will be you know entering into the bed to get it suspended here and then internal heating of that uh, you know internal heating condition will be there uh, in the fluidized bed because to carry out some uh, reactions in the fluidized bed at a certain temperature then you have to maintain that temperature inside the bed. Okay. So, that is why some internal heating provisions to be there it may be externally also and then there will be you know that cyclone separator you will see that some particles whenever it will be fluidized very fine particles will be you know uh, going upward and then it will be coming out from the bed those particles to be you know separated from the outlet gas stream which will be again used for its you know operation. So, that will be separated by a cyclone separator and then it will be recycled and also there will be a pump or blower by which you can supply the gas into the uh, you know fluidized bed and also there will be some provisions where the solids of takes to be there that means solids to be taken out and that total uh, fluidized bed will be there as a shell you can say there. Okay. So, here these are some you know uh, basic elements of that fluidized bed and also you will see that different layout of the fluidized bed you can expect some will be circulating fluidized bed there you will see that the solid particles which will be coming out from the outlet of the fluidized bed that can be utilized again or recycled just by separating by you know cyclone separator. So, this will be called as recycle or recycling or circulating fluidized bed. Some fluidized bed you will see that there will be laterally staged bed there here the solid will be entering here and fluid will be laterally you know allowing so that that solid particles will be laterally flowing whereas, you know fluid or gas or liquid will be flowing upward. So, in that case it will be called as laterally staged bed. Some will be vertically staged bed some stage wise that solid particles will be falling downward and fluid will be flowing upward there itself you will see that the solid will be you know suspending in a stage wise. And then some riser that means here is a column there will be a solid particles which will be suspending by the action of the fluid and then downward also whenever the solid particles will be flowing uh, downward after separating from that cyclone separator it will be recycled 
into a regenerator section where that solid particles like catalyst to be regenerated. So, there it will be passed. Some beds will be you know that floating bed where solid particles will be suspending in a gas liquid system ok, there it will be floating. Some condition will be bubbling bed where bubbles will be forming whenever gas will be fluidized in a solid bed and some will be twin bed condition. You will see that some particles which are coming out after reactions on the one bed and that will be going to the another bed for the regeneration. So, it will be called a twin bed and then some will be spouted bed there you will see that some particles uh, in the bed will be flowing downward whenever it will be you know uh, suspending uh, it will be flowing downward along with the wall of that bed whereas at the center line the gas will be flowing upward. So, it will be called as you know spouted bed. So, these are different you know layout of the fluidized bed. Then uh, uh, whenever that solid particles you know will be coming in contact with that you know gas or liquid in the fluidized bed there may be you know that different modes that may be some will be bass mode, some will be co current, some will be cross current, some will be counter current and some will be inverse. So, as per that layout it will be there. Some inverse fluidization also will be there. In that case you will see that whenever solid particles will be very lighter compared to the liquid or gas. In that case the solid particles will try to you know go up based on its buoyancy force. So, in that case those particles to be fluidized you have to you know give the flow of liquid against its buoyancy. So, that is why the flow of fluid will be downward and based on that downward flow of fluid or momentum the solid particles will be going downward ok. So, this type of you know flow it will be called as inverse flow. Now, question is that why you are going to you know use this fluidization operation there will be a certain advantage over this compared to the pack bit because we have analyzed some you know uh, example of uh, reactions as well as physical operations which is uh, being carried out in a pack bit condition or fixed bit condition. Now, those reactions can also be done in the fluidized bed operation. In this case you know that solid particles will be suspending instead of you know getting fixed in a bed. So, during that suspension of that solid particles there will be some advantages. So, that is why this fluidized bed operations will be advantageous compared to the pack bed condition. So, what are those advantages? In this case this fluidization operation you can easily handle it there will be a good mixing of the solid particles, there will be high heat transfer, there will be high mass transfer, there will be more contact efficiency between solid and gas or liquid, there may be you know that feasible for exothermic reactions also. Here also you can uh, you know make it large scale operation and you can do continuous operation also here in this fluidized bed. But though here some advantages there will be some disadvantage also. In this case you will see the sometimes some particles which were used as a you know very fine particles that make you know make that agglomeration or clogging to each other because of that you know uh, you know van der Waals force that is cohesiveness nature. So, in that case you know it will be very difficult to you know flow those type of particles. Also there will be capital investment will be more here in this case. Here one disadvantage is that there will be a chance of back mixing sometimes some reactions whenever it will be carried out if there is a back mixing that yield of the reaction will be less. So, in this case it may happen you know that uh, back mixing of this you know fluidized bed. And also difficulty in plug flow of course, since this is a back mixing uh, happens some solid particles those who are you know density will be higher or bigger in size they may come downward whereas, fine particles will be moving upward. So, if there is a wider size distribution of the particles there will be a segregation of these particles inside the bed and because of which the you know nature of the plug flow to get it inside the bed is very difficult because some reactions will be giving the prefer yield at this plug flow condition, but those reactions will not be possible to carry it out in this uh, you know uh, fluidized bed. Also here size problems the fluidized bed it will be made in such a way that the you know column will be very high and also uh, enough space is required. There will be some entrainment problem in the fluidized bed whenever this mixture of the solid particles uh, 
uh, there may be a certain size distribution and because of which uh, all the particles may not be you know suspending some particles will remain in the bottom part. So, they are to get all the particle suspension you will see that very high flow rate is required very turbulent condition is required, but whenever you are applying that turbulent condition in this case the very fine particles will be coming out from the you know uh, bed. So, in that case again you have to have some provisions to separate those you know fine particles. So, in that case it will be more investment capital investment even also not feasible. So, uh, in this case some problem will be there and also erosion problem whenever the solid particles will be flowing inside the bed you will see that there will be interaction of the solid particles with the wall of the bed as well as you know particle particles. So, there will be a chance of that attrition of this particles that means breaking of particles as well as that you know uh, interaction of the solid particles of the wall there will be you know some breaking or, or you can say that you know uh, some erosion problem uh, inside the bed. Also uh, one important point that here disadvantage is that, that some hydrodynamic issue there is a complex hydrodynamic phenomena you will see that to you have to maintain that certain flow phenomena you have to you know uh, consider the optimum you know condition of that geometry as well as other uh, properties of this bed. And also you will see that there are a random motion of that solid particles to track all those particles inside the bed. Also you know that uh, distribution of the solid particles gas even the void fractions inside the bed that will sometimes affect on the uh, reaction yield or reaction or you can say that operation of performance. So, all those you know complex phenomena of this fluid flow or hydrodynamics it is called that may sometimes you know assess uh, uh, will be very difficult and also accurate assessment of that you know efficiency of the process uh, is very difficult. Also you will see that sometimes sudden pressure loss inside the bed will be there at high flow rate because of that distribution of the uh, kinetic energy based on its size of the particle. We are talking about that you know fluidized bed or fluidization phenomena what is that fluidization now where that operation of fluidized phenomena can be applied, what are the application of this fluidized bed. You will see the most of the application in industry whatever products we are getting in our daily life you will see all those being done in a fluidized operation. Especially in the energy sector even other you know chemical industry where that different chemicals organic or inorganic chemicals are being produced even sometimes separation processes where some unwanted materials to be you know separated those operations is being done in a fluidized bed. In this case you will see that sometimes synthesis of advanced material production of that advanced material the fluidization operation is required like silicon production for semiconductor and solar industry this fluidized bed is being used. You will see that sometimes you need to coat that catalyst particles that is being done in fluidized bed. You have to you know coat that nanoparticles you know that is also being done in a fluidized operation. Also in chemical and petrochemical industries you will see that to crack that heavy hydrocarbons to produce that lighter hydrocarbons for our daily use it is being done in a fluidized bed. Also whatever polymeric substance polymeric products we are getting here all those polymeric substances are being you know synthesized in a fluidized bed. So, any gas phase polymeric reactions is being carried out in a fluidized bed to get this polyethylene or polymeric substances. And then for combustion and pyrolysis, this is one of the important uh, you know operations in fluidized bed. You will see that whatever power we are getting now, you know, whatever you know using this you know valve or whatever power night or day or any operation we are using those power is coming those are just or you can say that electricity whatever we are using that is coming or that is produced in a you know thermal power plant. In that case you will see that what is being done there the coal particles are being you know burned and producing that you know steam just by combustion of coal and those steam it is being used in a turbine to produce this electricity this is a simple way that I am saying. So, that coal combustion is being done in a fluidized bed you will see that whatever ash is coming out just after combustion of the coal 
those actually ash is coming out from that fluidized bed. So, there coal is burning in the fluidized bed to create the steam or to generate steam which is being used in a turbine to produce this electricity. Not only producing that electricity, also the coal is being burned in a fluidized bed to produce different valuable you know gaseous product. You will see that uh, there will be methane production, there will be uh, some other hydrogen, carbon monoxide, nitrogen, even other different types of you know gaseous products can be you know produced from this you know coal burning. Those you know gaseous products after separation you can get in different way, okay, different uses. So, here we can say that after combustion of coal we can get the steam as well as valuable gaseous product. So, combustion or gasification of coal is being done in a fluidized bed. Also you will see that to separate that unwanted material from the ore, that ore is being pyrolyzed in a fluidized bed or sometimes you will see that to separate valuable components of the gaseous component or chemicals you know in a gaseous form from the natural resources or bio materials there you will see that pyrolysis is being done. So, that is being done in a fluidized bed. Like you know that you will see that sometimes you will see that from the biomass like cast grass or you know jathropa oil or some other bio material bio substances or wood you can say from which you will see that there will be production of ethanol. So, ethanol production from this biomass it is being done just by after pyrolysis. So, here this pyrolysis is being done fluidized beta. So, this is the fluidization operation. Also some other physical operation like coating of that you know metal also drying of the solids is being done in fluidized bed. You know paddy is being you know dried in a fluidized bed. Roasting of food, different food products after roasting that you are getting that is, is being done in a fluidized bed. Also you can get that different types of you know or uh, segregate the particles in the fluidized bed based on its size as well as density. Coating of peels, granulation production of plant and animal cells those are also being done in a fluidized bed. So, these are several applications in a fluidized bed. Some commercial applications here solid catalyzed gas phase reactions like fluid catalytic cracking, reforming, acrylonitrile and aniline production is being done in a fluidized bed. Chlorination and bromination of hydrocarbons is being done you know fluidized bed. Fischer troughs synthesis is being done in a fluidized bed. Polyethylene and polypropylene production is being done in a fluidized bed, oxidation of NOx and SOx that is being done in a fluidized bed, thallic and malic anhydride production is being done in a fluidized bed. Gas solid reactions also you can see that roasting of ores like zinc sulphide, copper sulphide, nickel sulphides etcetera are being roasted to separate the valuable minerals from the ores. Combustion and incineration that is being done like coal combustion, also gasification, coking, pyrolysis and carbonization is being done in fluidized bed. These are gas solid reactions, other gas solid reactions like calcination, limestone phosphates, aluminum hydroxide like this. Reduction of iron oxide is the one of the important that whatever steel you are getting that is being done from the iron ore. That iron ore is being reduced in a or reduction is being done in a fluidized bed. Okay. Also fluid coking catalyst regeneration, you will see that fluidized bed catalytic cracking is being done there in a fluidized bed to get that lighter hydrocarbon like gasoline, you know kerosene, even LPG all those gaseous products you can get it just by cracking uh, in a fluidized bed from the naphtha or you know other heavy hydrocarbons. Even you will see that fluorination of uranium oxide that is also produced in a plant of that fluidized bed. Here coal combustion that I talked about that how that power or electricity is produced there. This is the you know fluidized bed, here you will see that uh, heat generation is you know there and uh, due to that heat generation you will see that coal particles will be you know burnt and then uh, you will see that during which that heat will be generated and those heat will be you know transferring to the uh, water which will be converting into uh, steam and that steam will be you know utilized in a uh, steam turbine to generate that electricity. 
Also other you know gaseous products which will be coming out after combustion of coal which will be coming out from the top and after separation of that fine particles from that gaseous products. It will be again uh, used uh, as a gas turbine here to produce that you know electricity that is gas generated electricity also steam generated electricity. So, gas turbine and steam turbine to you know run that you need gas and steam which will be produced by the you know coal combustion in a fluidized bed. Fluorination of uranium oxide this is the you know plant prototype based on which here this is the fluidized bed in which that uh, fluorination of uranium oxide is being done. Natural gas combustion also you will see that to combustion of that natural gas which will be giving you that you know synthesis gas that is carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas can be produced in that you know just by burning that methane gas. And then reduction process of iron ore here. So, uh, you will see that uh, iron ore can be reduced in a fluidized bed these are the fluidized bed this is the continuous operation ok and uh, based on that carbon monoxide and hydrogen. So, by reduction of that iron ore by this carbon monoxide and hydrogen you can get that iron there. So, from this iron in a blast furnace you can get the steel. Let us uh, you know have some video just to have a you know concept of that fluidization operation. Let us see that reduction process of iron ore here this is the plant just see this this plant uh, this is the fine x uh, company they are using that fluidized bed you know to produce that iron here this is the fluidized bed ok here the fluidized bed and this is a schematic of this fluidized bed you see a total plant so fine ore particles will be coming from this part in a fluidized bed okay and after that reduction those will be you know coming at this third fluidized bed here and the carbon monoxide and hydrogen will be you know passing through that bottom through the distributor and then particles will be fluidizing and then you will see that some gaseous products will be producing and which will be you know recirculating and then with the help of coke that iron will be you know burnt to get that you know uh, that steel there you know like this here coal particles will be falling downward this is coke as a coke can to be falling downward along with that you know reduced iron oxide and then here at a certain temperature this is that iron will be melting and all the carbonaceous product whatever unwanted products will be you know separated here also in the blast furnace and then you will get a certain you know grade of this you know iron product there and from which the steel is making as per grade ok. So, this is the benefits uh, of this you know fluidization operation the direct use of low cost fine iron ores direct charging of low cost non cooking coal generation of clean you know export gas for a wide range of downstream applications production of hot metal in a quality identical to blast furnace hot metal proven experiment or environmentally friendly hot metal production here. So, you can uh, you know produce iron equi-friendly based on this fluidization operation ok. Then uh, another commercial application it is called gas liquid solid reactions there in this case fluid bed catalytic cracking here hydrotreating process biochemical process cultivation of microorganisms 
in this case one example here the hydrocarbon production based on that uh, you know fischer tropsch synthesis in this case you know carbon monoxide and hydrogen mixture that is called synthesis gas will be used to crack that natural gas to produce that uh, synthesis gas with that help of synthesis gas this heavy hydrocarbons will be you know cracked into a lighter hydrocarbons in this uh, bed this is three phase fluidized bed that is called slurry bubble column reactor at a certain temperature okay and then after getting that product it will be separated into a different graded product other fluid bed catalytic cracking this is the complete you know a process of that fluid bed catalytic cracking here you will see that in the riser this is fluidized bed in this case uh, that heavy hydrocarbons will be you know cracked uh, in presence of catalyst particles and it will give you that lighter product and it will be separated in a distillation column and then you can get the different uh, type of fuel oil whereas the solid particles will remains it will be you know sent back to the regenerator to reuse that you know solid particles as a catalyst now list of indian company where this fluid catalytic cracking units are used that is you know that indian oil corporation limited gauhati iocl barauni and uh, you will see that hindustan petroleum corporation limited that is in mumbai bharat petroleum corporation limited mumbai rashi refineries limited koshi even bongaigaon refinery and petrochemicals limited bongaigaon in assam new aligarh refinery limited new aligarh that is assam those you know plant in those plant they are using this uh, fluidized bed cracking operation physical operations like drying of solids coating of catalyst tablet granulation heat treatment like annealing quenching blending or classification of the solid particles adsorption roasting all those operations are being done in a fluidized bed here you can see this you know video of that coffee bean roasting you will see that the green coffee bean will be roasted in a fluidized bed at a certain temperature and uh, pressure just by fluidizing that green coffee bean at a temperature you will see that this green coffee bean will be converting into a brown coffee bean after just fluidized at a uh, certain temperature that is hot air will be supplied at that temperature and it will be roasted or fluidized and then green coffee bean will be converting into a uh, brown coffee bean after roasting okay and then uh, uh, it will be you know ground to mix with the milk to get your uh, final cup of coffee so here in this case roasting of coffee bean is being done in a you know fluidized bed here see this is one fluidized bed in the video here see this coffee bean this is green coffee bean raw coffee bean is being fluidized the gas is supplied from the bottom of this fluidized bed at a certain flow rate that means above the minimum fluidization velocity and start up roast at 3 minute at 350 fahrenheit degree celsius and after that again that after 6 minutes you know that temperature will raise to 370 degree fahrenheit and then you will see that green coffee bean will be converting into a brown coffee bean okay after roasting so this is being done basically that in the fluid as see you will see that final stage 4 minutes at 425 degree fahrenheit and 3 minutes at 455 degree fahrenheit coffee is being uh, getting uh, ready so after final product of this coffee bean uh, will be coming like this this is the conversion of this uh, brown coffee bean from its green coffee bean and then it will be ground in a you know mixer grinder then it will be making into a you know that uh, powder form which is being used for your cup of tea okay so this is basically the fluidized bed operation okay and then uh, another operation which is called granulation and coating process here also you can get some smell of that you know fluidization operation how that fluidized bed uh, can be used for this granulation and coating process so in this case i want to thank to this glad sp process you know this is a courtesy of this uh, you know uh, glad process here i acknowledge them uh, I have used their you know video here from the YouTube. So in this case, this is uh, fluidization. So uh, here see that fluidized bed, and from the bottom gas is coming out, and the solid particles is being you know fluidized. Now granulation to be done. That means the fine solid particles will be coming a you know uh, bigger solid particles, 
Now for that you, uh, you need some binder. So the binder will be sprayed from the bottom here from the spray nozzle that is spraying it done and then spraying basically the binder the sol solvent that we have discussed in the granulation operation in the earlier you know lecture. Here after binding of those that some solid particles will be making a granular forms that means agglomeration it is called the granule. So after that it will be drying and then uh, also this uh, you know fluidized bed can be used for you know that coating of that solid particles. So for coating you need some polymeric substance over that solid particles that coating of that polymeric substance will happen and for this you need that fluidization operation to get that uniform coating over the solid surface and that is why you are doing this uh, fluidization. You will see that some uh, red color that polymeric substances which is coated on this particle over the solid surface and then you know particle is being coated here. So, this is called you know granulation and coating operation in a fluidized bed operation. Now, uh, question is that that uh, we have some idea about that fluidization operation we have seen video as well as you know that uh, we have discussed what is the basic uh, concept of that uh, fluidization operation, where is the advantage, where is the disadvantage, where that fluidization operation can be utilized or applied all those things. But what you have to know except this you know application and this phenomena, where you can apply this. So, for that you have to know some fundamental or basic more about this fluidization operation. In that case you have to know what is the hydrodynamics behind this fluidized bed, what will be the flow regime, flow pattern, what is the distribution of that phases, what is the mechanism of that distribution, what is the entrainment characteristics of the solid particles inside that fluidized bed, how that solid particle size distribution can affect on that you know mixing of that solid particles inside the bed. Also what is the attrition characteristics of that bed what will be the minimum fluidization condition that you have to keep based on which you can get that you know particular fluidized bed for a particular operation. Is there any other force that can be applied to get this particle suspended or not? What will be the heat transfer characteristics? What will be the mass transfer characteristics for that particular separation operation or other you know reaction systems? How can you simulate or can you model to assess this fluidization operation? How can you scale up this process? all those things you have to know. But in your uh, course all those things cannot be you know possible to discuss. So, in this case only as per your you know course uh, structure we will be discussing what will be the minimum fluidization condition as an undergraduate. For more details you can get uh, more about this fluidization operation or fluidization engineering. So, you can follow this you know NPTEL course, this MOOCs course again here in the fluidization operation that is fluidization engineering course that you can follow. So, in the next class we will try to you know discuss or know uh, try to learn about that minimum fluidization condition, what will be the you know criteria to get that minimum fluidization, what will be the velocity, how can I you know uh, find out that minimum fluidization velocity based on which you can get that particle will get just suspended or you can maintain the incipient fluidization condition. So, what will be the minimum velocity required to get the fluidization operation? So, that will be discussed in the next classes. So, I think you understood the concept of fluidization. So, thank you for your uh, you know attention have a nice day. Mm -hmm.